and uh, welcome to the show. Joining us today is Dutch actress Victoria Koblenko. We're going to be talking about the Dutch referendum on Ukraine's treaty with the EU. Victoria, thank you for uh, coming to the programme. Thanks for having me. So this uh, referendum is coming very soon and uh, often in the Netherlands, like Ukraine, uh, gets a bad image almost often. There's like, stories about war, about what's going on in the parliament, but actually there's a lot more than that. So you know, from your point of view and from your experience, um, how important is this relationship between the Dutch and uh, Ukraine? Well, I think the Dutch-Ukrainian um, relations always have been very friendly, um, but they have reached um, a depression after the plane crash. And we are such a small country and everybody knows someone who has lost someone in that plane crash. And um, there is lack of knowledge, of course, um, about the evidence, what exactly happened. Mm. And the usual... Uh, Dutch people sometimes hold a grudge on the Ukrainian government um, because they haven't been able to prevent such a, such a disaster. Mm. And this referendum seems to, um, if there's a no on the April 6, um, will of course even make our relations uh, get even worse and we have to try to prevent that. Yeah, well there's um, a lot of like, anti-European sentiment at the moment, maybe not just in the Netherlands but throughout Europe as well and this is definitely contributing to the no vote as well but it's a shame isn't it because actually there's a lot of like potential in Ukraine. Yes, and that potential, uh, unfortunately, hasn't been visible. The Institute of Foreign Policy here in Ukraine has uh, been doing some research among um, European uh, nas uh, um, nationalities of what they know about Ukraine. And especially the Dutch turned out to be most skeptical mm. while they know the least about this country. So this country has been very famous uh, um, for the war for um, the plane crash and uh, two to six percent of the Dutch respondents mention Maidan, mention other um, revolutions and that is mm. super sad. So Ukraine yeah. really has to do more effort to bring out the positive uh, potential in the future and like you said, um, Ukraine can become collateral damage if uh, we vote no in Netherlands. Mm. Uh, but Ukraine also has to understand that um, this no will not mean a disaster. Because it's not binding, is it? It's, it's not like well, a final it, decision. It's a very the, subtle issue because yeah. imagine that um, this is our first referendum in, 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 uh, of this nature. Um, so everybody is a little tense and worried about mm. the outcomes. And we have to get 30% people to vote um, to have this referendum valid. Mm. And it seems like up to this point, point, if we would have this referendum today, a no would be the answer. Yeah. So the camp that is either indecisive yet or um, maybe boycotting the whole concept of referendum. This whole idea. And, uh, they have to be mobilized by the Dutch um, parties who have actually all already signed this, mm. uh, this treaty. And if these parties are not going to campaign actively for a yes, um, they will not be able after uh, the voting to say to the public, well, thank you very much for voting. Mm. Uh, we respect your vote, but we're going to do differently. That will be a disaster for uh, for our cabinets. Yeah, it would be. And it's interesting that you pointed out that a lot of people in the Netherlands think of uh, the past uh, revolutions in Ukraine and the war as well. Um, like you've lived in the Netherlands for a number of years now. Have you actually seen much of an effort uh, by Ukraine and the pro-yes um, camp um, to actually put across this positive message about Ukraine? Um, I think there's not only an effort to be made by the Ukrainians, but mostly by the Dutch who live and work here and who are successful here. And uh, I think they um, have a chance to have a much more credible story because they're closer to, you know, the Dutch spirit. Yeah, well, they know of, what's uh, going on in Ukraine. Yes, so yeah. I, I do really miss their uh, um, opinion and their... Um, yeah, their, their struggle to, to make it a yes vote. Mm. And... Um, um, I think for Ukraine it's important to realize that if 
there's going to be no, not to take it personally, because um, uh, Europe is dealing now with its own deficit of uh, um, democracy. Well, yeah. We have a, a huge democratic crisis, and so probably this uh, this vote will be mostly fueled by. Um, yeah, tensions. Uh... Well, that's true because like, Europe has a lot of like, dilemmas at the moment. It's not just Ukraine in the east, but also you have the migrant crisis, which is really taking over. You have this economic crisis and unemployment yes. and all these you know, difficulties that the leaders must uh, work out. Yeah, but the, but the people who have taken initiative for this referendum are uh, making really bold statements about Ukraine. What so are they they're, saying? Well, they're, there's really the, the, their lack of knowledge about... The, uh, for example, they think that everybody who speaks Russian in Ukraine is either an ethnic Russian mm. or pro-Putin. I mean, yeah. that's quite a bold statement Which to is say. a myth, complete myth. Uh, of course. Uh, I mean, there's a difference between... Uh, a hybrid conflict and a civil war mm. and they try to uh, frame the conflict in yeah. the east as civil it's war. It's true I've actually seen some of the adverts yeah. uh, for people who wanted to vote against this referendum. And of course and I mean everybody terms, is but... against corruption mm. the yes camp and the no camp but the no camp has have you heard that they actually tried uh, they printed uh, 50,000 euro on toilet paper with oh, this no, I did, treaty. I did read this recently in the news, and yeah. You, as, a mar as a marketeer, you got to mm. give them that, that this is a brilliant uh, move because mm. uh, it's, it's guerrilla marketing and, and it's brilliant. So the Yes Camp has to come up with something even more br brilliant. But since the Yes Camp is in the more reasonable side, mm. it's, um, it's hard to do. Well, they face kind of the uphill struggle in a way. Yeah. Don't they? Because a lot of the Dutch are already sceptical. And it's understandable in a way because if you live in the Netherlands, Ukraine is far away. It would be like if you lived in any other country. It is far away, far away. And let's face it that Ukraine has done a lot in the past two years, probably more than in, in the last 20 years. Mm. So there's great effort made by the Ukrainian uh, civil society. But uh, we can't deny that there's even more work to be done in the future. And um, I think the treaty provides Ukraine with a road map how to make reforms mm. but but a big misunderstanding I think in the mass Ukrainian public is this that um, sometimes here they say we want to live up to Ukrainian values mm. by that they mean they want to uh, have better economic conditions yeah. of living but that doesn't necessarily mean that they want to adopt other European uh, uh, freedoms, basic freedoms or human rights. And um, we have to be uh, frank that a lot of work has to be done in the yeah. future on that. But it's true, you mentioned there is a lot of work by civil society now um, in Ukraine to actually try and influence this vote, not just uh, the media, but also you have these other groups who are setting up different uh, groups in the Netherlands to try and influence people. Um, why is um, Ukraine so important, do you think, in the region? What sort of like, political importance does it have? Um, <clears throat> well, I think the, re the whole referendum thing, um, um, I'm going to make again an, a bold statement, I think that um, regular people mm. uh, are not capable of making uh, these kind of judgments about uh, macro uh, political uh, changes and tr transitions, mm. especially knowing how a few countries in the um, Eastern uh, Europe have shown some signs of um, uh, reverse yeah. transition from mm. uh, first going to um, democratic values and now a little return. So uh, I think for Ukraine, it's, it's um, crucial to understand that um, they have to prove to Europe that they um, are willing to invest deeply mm -hmm. in um, human rights yeah. and uh, corruption uh, fight. And, and, and unfortunately, very few results are visible up to this point. Mm -hmm. Many measures have been taken, but unfortunately, results are not very visible to the Europeans. Yeah. I have one last uh, question before we uh, wrap up about your recent visit to Kiev. Now, you've been here with uh, a number of uh, influential people from the Netherlands. Mm. Uh, can you tell us a bit more about um, what you're uh, doing here and uh, what your main aims are? 
Well, it, it's it's basically a study visit. Mm. Um, like I've I've been here a few years before to monitor elections, for example, um, and those visits usually are super intense. You mm. you, of course, you have knowledge already about the country, especially when you speak the the language and and you have some um, statistical uh, uh, background, like like I do. I I I, I have a. Um, political science degree yeah. in, uh, many years back so for me it's it's um, maybe a little easier to judge about what's happening here but it, that doesn't mean that my knowledge is uh, um, um, actual mm. uh, because I'm, I do not live here I yeah. follow the news but it's very uh, crucial to talk to people who are here every day um, actually experience life and yes experience the, so you the have this picture and, and, yeah. and it's and it's um, uh, drawn in maybe some uh, like three colors yeah um, and and uh, the means of this visit is to make it a very colorful understandable um, um, understanding of the country and I think that's crucial if you want to state something about it in Netherlands OK, perfect. Well, Victoria, thank you very much for uh, coming on the programme and uh, talking about the Dutch referendum that's uh, coming up very soon. Thanks for having me. That was Victoria Koblenko. She is a Dutch actress currently visiting Ukraine. Now, back to the news.